Sweet. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take out my phone from time to time just because all the notes are here. And of course, we didn't learn this text and we don't have to. Um, well, welcome to another episode of Nick's Meridian Expedition. We're Nick and Mathilde. And the objective of this um, video is because today is actually six months on the road. So today we're the 18th of October. And we... Um, started 18th of April which is exactly six months ago and we are super excited um, the reason why this video is important to us is because we've been thinking about it for a while and we've always been thinking we should probably make a video reflecting on why we did this trip are we happy was it a good choice and go through all those ideas because going on this trip was a tough decision and so we want to tell you if it was good decision or bad decision and we're gonna go through all of this uh, we're going to answer a few questions that we asked ourselves over the past six months, which surely will reflect and relate to some of you. But then we've also added a few questions that you've been asking just because it then completes better the whole thing. And of course, if we've missed out any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if we can, we'll get back to you on those questions. If we don't have the answers, we'll try and give you the best answer. Um, we also do this video because we think it's interesting for anybody out there who's looking to go travel who needs a little bit of a push who might is just curious or is interested um, because when we left on this trip we wondered if anybody out there would have done this type of video and we always wanted to know so is this trip really a good decision are you regretting anything are you making money are you losing money and so there's so many things that on this video i hope will help a lot of you and if not, well, it'll just be another video where you can see our faces and albatross behind us. Um, and how it will go, it will be that I will ask the questions and Mathilde will go first and answer the question. And then I will answer second, just in case there's a difference in opinion. But most probably the answer will be the same since we travel together and uh, we're together since seven years now. So most probably we'll think the exact same way. But anyways, we'll go through them and see how it goes. Are you ready? Yeah. Awesome. So a lot of you have said there's a sound problem. We got a microphone for the camera. We're going to talk loud and we've upgraded our um, quality. So I'm hoping, finger crossed, all of this is good. Um, first question. So what did we do the last six months? This is just a recap. Real recap? Quick. Yeah. Okay. We left on the 18th of April from the French Alps, a city called Annecy. And then we did first two months in Scandinavia. So we drove all the way north through Germany, we reached Denmark, traveled to Sweden, Norway, down through Finland, and then we shipped the car in Germany where we prepared it for a shipment to Canada. The past three months, mm -hmm. we were traveling from the east coast of Canada, starting in Halifax, and we crossed the entire country all the way to the Rockies, uh, in Calgary, where um, more or less we meet up a bit, a bit north of that, we met up with Tom and Eva to go for the Alaska expedition. Uh, so we drove all the way to Prudhoe Bay, and then the past months we've been driving down through British Columbia, Vancouver Island, Vancouver, and now we entered the USA. Yeah. How do you feel about having moved full time in the car and quitting your job? So it was hard quitting our jobs and moving in the car. I mean, quitting our jobs and making the decision of leaving because we always say that we really liked our previous life. We loved our jobs. We loved our friends. We liked like city life. So we enjoyed some of it, um, but we needed adventure. So it was still a bit of like hard pinch when we had to leave our job and like transition to an entire new lifestyle. I thought it would probably be hard to move full time in the car. We had traveled with this car many times, but I thought it would be maybe hard to like really full time living in it. Um, and eventually I realized that even though the first months I was a bit like missing my job in, in some weird ways, like I was missing my team and um, I actually forgot very quickly about it. <laughs> I was like very quickly relieved from all that stress that went away and very confident that we were doing the right thing. 
And in terms of moving in the car, it really felt like living a normal life. Just instead of my apartment, it was in my car. And I thought it would be much harder to do that. Okay. And so today, the move full time into the car makes a lot of sense and you're super happy. But it's so natural. After one week, yeah. we felt like it was our new home. We didn't even ask ourselves the question. Yeah. Yeah. And so for my part, again, very similar to Mathilde. Um, you know, when you have like a really strong feeling that you want to do something, but you always wonder, can I do it? Should I do it? When? Maybe I'll do it later. So this trip was something that we strongly felt we wanted to do. And it kept growing every time we went on a road trip. And at some point we said, ah, it's a pity that all of our holidays are ending and we have to turn back and start driving back home. And so whenever we have these type of strong feelings, we try and think about it. We say, well, how do we you know, make it go the way we want it to go? And uh, for this trip, we said, well, let's just do a big trip. And so quitting our job was very tough. We are not running away from anything. We loved our jobs, but we needed to do this. And why did we do it now? It's because <clears throat> uh, there's so many uh, parameters, but the first one was traveling with a vehicle now that has very few electronics is one reason. The second reason is because we're still young and have the energy. And so we said, okay, probably we should do it now. So we looked at each other, we said, can we do it now? And we said, no, we need to save money. So we saved money and then we got there. And a month ago when we quit our jobs, uh, six months ago, sorry, when we quit our jobs, seven months ago now actually, it was super exciting. We said, okay, let's go. And of course, there's so many doubts, like, are we going to have fun? Uh, what happens if we're always together? Things like that. And actually today, yeah, quitting our jobs, we have no regrets. You actually forget after a week that you left that you had a job and once you're on the road you're so busy enjoying all the things that are happening that you just forget about what you had before of course you remember the friends you remember sometimes a job but that's about it right and quickly you just sink into the new adventure and there's no feeling of yeah of detachment from what's really happening now yeah but honestly more than the job i feel it's the moving in the car i thought it would be much harder for a full-time transition I thought I would miss stuff you yeah. know like apartment kind of comfort yeah and I don't miss any of that okay so I'm gonna jump straight to that question then and the question is is there anything that we miss from our yeah but we thought we would probably miss some bits of comfort like more regular showers or the bathroom or things like that I think eventually what at least I miss is maybe the facility of seeing some long-time friends and some of the family like yeah. they're far away that's that's the main thing what yeah. are you i agree i think also just a bit more space i think sometimes this car is perfect it brings us everywhere but sometimes maybe you know our, our couch isn't super great the bed is great but the couch isn't so maybe just being able to lay down peacefully while you're just you know enjoying netflix or whatever it's just that cozy chill moment which I feel like more space would be nice, but the rest honestly is fine. And I prefer having this car than the cozy couch. So at the end, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Maybe in six months it'll be different. Yeah. Um, was it the right choice to do this trip? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we have no regrets. And honestly, we don't even think about the job. We don't even think we were not sad about anything that we've left behind honestly no it's just yeah. perfect someone asked us recently like are you happy like are you still happy about this whole thing and we were thinking about it we were like yeah yeah we're like super happy we didn't lose the drive to travel after six months i mean maybe later on but for now we're like all yeah. into it yeah for sure some things have changed maybe we know what we prefer and what we don't want to do. We know how f the pace of the trip has to go. We know what type of sleeping areas we want and don't want. So, of course, some things have changed, but it's just the trip itself, optimizing the trip itself, not... Redesigning it. Redesigning mm -hmm. our trip, because the trip is what we wanted. Um, so, to continue on that discussion, today, do we feel as motivated as the first month? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even somehow maybe more in a more yeah. concrete manner like we know what to expect a bit more because six months ago we knew where it was to travel but we didn't know where it was to travel like full time in this yeah. manner yeah. now i feel even more motivated because i know what it is exactly so we it look it seems like we went from an excited 
an excitement type of feeling of, oh my gosh, we're leaving for this trip, that now we're like, we're living it. And on top of it, we get to modify it to the way we want to optimize the trip the way we want it. So you're still, yeah. And we had apprehensions that we don't have anymore. Yeah, so now we're just enjoying the trip and making it better the way we want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so what have been some of the biggest challenges for the past six months? Uh, we had a few mechanical problems, not huge, but a little, little bits here and there. But it was nice to see that we were like always managing to overcome it. Uh, so we had the starter issue in Quebec where we had to push the car for an entire week to start it. So that was, uh, I think, the, the biggest one in mm. terms of like putting a limit to our ability to move. Yeah. Now we have the DCDC that burned, but again, you figured out a way to like charge the batteries. Yeah. So I think mechanics was one, but it was not dramatic, but it was one of the challenge. Yeah. Do you have another one? Um, yeah, I definitely do. A challenge is, um, so when you live in such a small vehicle, and I'm a little bit more on the <laughs> clean maniac side. Uh, I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah. So because it's so small and we're sharing such a small space, um, you have to be even more careful about what you leave behind while you go do something because the next person will have to see it or handle it because it's so small. So that's something also on the trip which is a bit challenging it's not challenge it's more just a, something that we learned on the trip is that we have to be even a bit more caring of the space because it quickly gets messy and same thing when we're driving off-road this is something we can't control unless we don't go off-road but we do want and uh, the it's defender so the seals are very bad let's say and so the mud the dust comes in and so before we go back in the car there's dust a bit everywhere and we have to like hit it out before going back in the car otherwise you're sleeping a bit in dust so it's just little little things where compared to a home you know you go and clean it once a week it's fine us it's probably also once a week but every day a little bit because yeah so that's probably my challenge any expected surprises so far uh maybe a surprise for me is that like it was so easy to like get used to live in the car mm. we didn't have like bad surprises or like bad things that we had not prepared for because we traveled in rather easy countries the past six months yeah. scandinavia and north america is kind of the 101 of like overland travel you find water everywhere um, places to sleep everywhere it's secure all the rest yeah so yeah positive surprise for me as well is how easy and how nice people are when you're on these type of travels and people on instagram facebook youtube are leaving so many awesome comments so many are saying hey come over to the house uh, we'll take care of the food we'll take care of the washing just come spend a night in here uh, with us uh, a lot of people are giving us tips on where to go and that's something when you're doing travels um, not extensively but just like you know normal travels let's say when you have a job you don't have all these people inviting you over and writing you. We've never had that. And it's the first time so many people are writing and saying, hey, come by, stop by. Or saying, hey, don't forget, there's a really cool place you got to visit over there. Or there's an off-road over here. Uh, there's a secret cabin you can use over there. And that's, that's legendary. So honestly, that's really cool. Um, what do we enjoy most about our travels? Meeting people. I think what you just said. Yeah. Like it was so cool being invited at some locals place. Like like we would visit farms, we would try new activities, people would talk about their country and we would learn so much. So I think the learning through the people we meet is one. Uh seeing a lot of nature. I think it's it sounds a bit like easy as an answer, but we were living in a town and so I find that being in the nature every day yeah. is 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 such a nice thing and yeah. changing place every day always in more nature it's super cool yeah true I wouldn't have anything to add yeah. the whales seeing the whales seeing whales wild <laughs> animals oh yeah wild animals wild for animals sure. was cool uh, favorite three places so far Norway oh yeah definitely Norway uh, Alaska I love Yukon. Yukon in Yukon. Canada. Yeah. 
I mean, everything is so nice. It's really yeah. hard. But if we had to pick, and it was easy to answer right now because we've talked about these questions before and we tried to think about them. But Norway and Alaska and Yukon, I think, are the ones that right away come into our mind. And for me, Norway, like for both of us, Norway yeah, is the no. first one that comes. Norway is really insane. Because in Norway, you have the you have the amazing sceneries and you have like amazing activities to do, like amazing hiking and all the rest. Yeah. Yeah, we loved it. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on budget? E. Uh, so we literally left at the moment when <laughs> price of fuel and diesel like skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it was at 2.4 euros when we were in Norway, something like that per liter. Yeah. Uh, so that was a hard hit on the budget. A second one, now that we're in the USA, is the parity between euro and dollar. So when we left, uh, the euro was much stronger compared to the dollar. Now it's the reverse, so that's also very hard on the budget. So to be completely honest, we burned much more than what we expected in those uh, first months of travel. Yes and no. Yes, we burnt more than we expected because of that difference. But I think we knew we started with the most expensive countries and they would catch up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because Norway, I mean, Scandinavia is super expensive. Everyone says it. Um, Canada and the USA are, they're relatively fine compared to Europe. But then once we start hitting Central Asia, all of South America, it will be much better for our budget. Uh, Asia, the same. And Africa, most probably, we don't really know the traveling prices of Africa. We've heard really mixed answers, so it will be interesting to find out. But anyways, I think we are over budget for sure. But I think we'll catch up in South yeah. America, right? We have so yeah. many less economically expensive countries coming up. It will balance out at some point. But yeah. I think it was higher than we expected. For sure. Yeah. yeah. We've definitely spent three times the budget. <laughs> that we set per month, but the monthly was calculated on an average of a year. So we'll have to see actually after six months of expensive and six months of cheaper countries to see the oh, average. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure we'll still be above average. So what do we do if we run low on money? Can I go first? Yeah. Cool. We had the idea when we left of um, if we need to top up our savings we would do uh, virtual jobs you can s join websites where you get translating jobs or you uh, edit videos for people I mean there's tons of virtual jobs out there uh, another idea was to pause the trip maybe go work for a little bit and then you know a lot of people go to Australia especially when you're from Europe you can get one year of visa work visa so it could be an idea uh, Australia pays well apparently too so we would be creative in that sense, but we did save the money for three years. Um, now, all of those ideas, more or less, we've removed them because we did not think that YouTube and Patreon would work because of the, all the work we're doing. Um, it is bringing a very small portion of what we need, but it's still bringing a portion. And that portion will definitely, in less expensive countries, sort of help us balance out our costs. And so if it is that way, then most probably we'll be able to last a three years. So in terms of budget, I think if the trend keeps going this way for us, it will actually be pretty good. I think the main concern for us was uh, we really had money for three years sharp to do the entire world tour. And we were scared because with all the delays, with the boat, the shipment, I mean, you always take more time on the road than what you plan. We were scared that like we would never be able to do like the last leg of the trip, which is Africa, with the money we had. Mm -hmm. And with those new revenue streams, we don't necessarily need to take virtual jobs and we would be able to maybe travel for more than three years uh, and complete the entire world tour. So that's why we really like this kind of, kind of new system is because it allows us to focus entirely on the filming and the documenting while completing the world tour in its entirety. Yeah, exactly. And videos and pictures are things that we were going to do anyways. And making it public uh, makes a difference because now we're actually seeing the return of our work. 
which makes a lot of sense. So actually just making our videos public, it, uh, it really helps us. And on top of it, um, we might even be able to slow down because some parts were rushing a little bit, but um, we think we don't want to be on the road forever. So this is also a good speed. But um, if there was extra revenue coming in, then we might even be able to enjoy more of the places we go to just because we could spend an extra day or maybe an extra two days. And now for the Q&A, so some of the questions that we got from Instagram, uh, we've only picked four because a lot of them were answered in our own uh, questions. But somebody asked, are we traveling too fast, too slow or perfect? And actually, I think we just answered that just before. So we can skip that question. So question number two, how do we adjust in being together all the time and being in such a tiny space? Yeah, we got this question from literally everyone. Uh, yeah, we had this concern because when we we're living back in Brussels, we were traveling quite a bit for work. So we're not like we were not 24 seven with each other. But eventually we knew that when we we're traveling, we were like an, a good couple, you know, like we were a strong couple. And that's kind of what we feel here. Uh, we're not arguing more. We're not arguing less. I think it's like you translate everything that you have at home into kind of this new home, no? Yeah. I'm trying to think uh, how it was seven months ago in our apartment. It felt like so long ago. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that we're more in sync on the trip just because there's so many things together and it's a joint trip so we have to take all these decisions together and it does happen that sometimes we are grumpy in the morning or during the day it does happen that sometimes we get mad at each other it but super rarely and it does happen that we uh, don't agree on something but that's normal because we're always together and always having to take decisions but overall we're extremely happy and this is this is so much fun yeah and people are like yeah but you're in two square meters but eventually we have the biggest garden yeah, than true. anyone else. So if we really need space, we have space. It's just we need to like get back in a good mood probably faster because if we want to sleep, we're very close by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the third question is, are we always happy? I feel like it goes in line with the second question. Um, and we just kind of answered it. Yeah, we are mostly always happy, right? Yeah. Yeah, even if we do get upset at each other, I mean, we just drive and even if we don't talk, we're sitting next to each other, it's good enough and we're, we're just happy having the presence and then just looking out the window and enjoying everything we see with a little music or no music. So we're always happy at some, some level. It's not that one of us is upset about this trip or saying, ah, this is a bad decision, I wish I wasn't here. Never has, ha has it happened. So we're always in a, some form of happiness uh, at the end. Yeah, Parf happy. Powerful. Um, last question, what is the toilet situation? Uh, yeah, we've been asked many times how we handle the bathroom. Uh, for us, it was pretty easy. First, because the past six months we were in easy countries, so we would find bathrooms everywhere, uh, in recreation areas, visitor centers, gas station, everywhere. And then when we were in nature, we don't have a problem going in the bush for number one. So that's what we're doing. And then for number two, you see that nice shovel on the bonnet? That's number two. Uh, so it's really easy. All you do is dig a hole, do your business, and then biodegradable paper, and then you close it up. And everybody that has a car like ours or smaller, most probably doesn't have an integrated toilet. And so they're probably doing all the same thing we are. Uh, we know a lot of travelers who are doing that. And if they have a bigger vehicle, they probably have an integrated toilet. So it's much easier for them. And then they go dump it somewhere. But yeah, depends on the vehicle. So in our case, it's a shovel. <laughs> so that was a retrospective of the past six months that we've been doing. Last question is, what are we wishing for the next six months? Uh... We hope we can maintain this like drive of like happiness and energy in discovering. I think we will not lose it, but um, that's something I wish that we will keep because we're having so much fun right now. And also 
at least for me I'm really looking forward so now the US is beautiful and so I'm really looking forward like exploring a bit more of the nature in the US but then I'm looking forward like changing country, changing language, different kind of culture that is maybe a bit further away from our western cultures because I think we have so much to learn from that. And you? Um, yeah, I just think the sceneries will get even more raw and even more, I don't know if it's more adventurous but I feel like it will be more disconnected and so that's what I'm looking forward to is just to go see the places that are yeah so far away from where we are and that will be surely so different just because yeah it's just it looks more raw it just looks more adventurous yeah for sure for sure for sure all right well thanks a lot for watching this video and we wish you a great uh, day or evening or night and see you on the next episode bye bye ciao